Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a pretty interesting little pre-built PC from CyberPower PC that I recently picked up from Best Buy. I paid $750 for this pre-built and really what makes it interesting is the GPU they're using in this thing. They didn't opt for Nvidia or AMD, instead they went with the new Intel DG1. This is a dedicated GPU from Intel, this is actually the ASUS version. 4 gigabytes of VRAM, and it's actually based on their new Iris XE architecture. Now I'm a big fan of the new Intel Iris XE graphics that are built into their new mobile chips, be it i5 or i7, and if you're a regular viewer of the channel, you know I've tested a bunch of them out. But what makes this Intel GPU special is it's a dedicated unit. As you can see, it slots into a PCIe X16 slot. It's passively cooled because it only runs at 30 watts, that's why we don't need any fans on it, and hopefully we can get some decent performance out of this thing. I've been really trying to get my hands on one of these because, like I mentioned, I am a big fan of the integrated Iris XE graphics that they've been putting in their mobile chips, be it the 1135G7 or the 1165G7. When it comes to the specs on this new Intel XE DG1, we have 80 execution units, 4GB of LPDDR4X RAM running at 4,266 MHz, a 1500 MHz GPU clock, and a 30 watt TDP. So we don't need any extra power for this, it'll pull everything from that PCIe X16 slot. And this was really the main reason I picked up this pre-built CyberPower PC. I've been trying to get my hands on one of these for a while, but uh, you just can't even buy them gray market, so I had to buy a full pre-built to test this out. And the price on this pre-built is $750 from Best Buy, and with the PC market the way it is right now, this could turn out to be a decently priced pre-built PC, if it performs well. But before we jump right into testing, I want to give you a quick rundown on the full specs of this CyberPower PC. For the CPU, we have an Intel i5-11400F, 6 cores, 12 threads, base clock 2.6 GHz with the turbo up to 4.4. 8GB of DDR4 running at 3000MHz in single channel, and for my test I will be upgrading this to 16 running in dual channel. A 500GB NVMe SSD, that Intel DG1 XE GPU, and Windows 10 Home. Plus, as you can see, we got a little bit of RGB and the ASUS motherboard, a 550 watt power supply, plus we have built-in AC Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 5.0. When it comes to these pre builts everything that I've seen comes with single channel RAM and it's a great idea to upgrade to dual channel, so for this I'm going to be throwing two 8GB sticks in here running at 3600MHz. Alright, so here we are, I've got everything booted up, I've uh, been up and running for a little while, haven't noticed any major issues, as you can see we have that i5-11400F, 16GB of DDR4 running at 3600MHz, and the dedicated Intel Iris XE GPU, this is that ASUS version. Uh, first thing I wanted to see was the maximum GPU clock, which they state is 1500 MHz, and it is running at 1500, and it'll stay here all day. Now with this GPU, it has 4 gigabytes of LPDDR4X running at 4266 megahertz. I really wish they would have added DDR5 to this, it would have helped out tremendously. But the first thing I wanted to take a look at were a few GPU benchmarks. Here we have 3D Mark Night Raid with the total score of 19,539, and so far it's not looking great for a dedicated GPU. Now, if these were integrated graphics, it'd be just fine, but a 19,000 on a dedicated GPU just isn't looking great in 2021. Next on the list, we have Fire Strike with a 5,409, and finally, Time Spy with a 1,853. If you're a regular viewer of the channel, you know I do a lot of tests on the newer 5000 series APUs from AMD, and this is on par with the 5700G in all three tests that we just took a look at. But now it's time to see how this GPU really performs, and first up we have Forza Horizon 4, 1080p, low settings. Not great, but it is playable like this. We got an average of 62 FPS out of this one. Injustice 2 did pretty well at 1080p, low settings. Every once in a while, I do see it dip down to around 58, but if I didn't have that frame counter on, I'd be good to go. I wouldn't even notice it.
had a good feeling going into Overwatch that we'd get great performance out of it. We averaged 83 FPS, 1080p, medium settings. So yeah, this one's definitely playable. Fortnite 1080p performance mode with high textures on, we got an average of 151 FPS. It actually did better than I thought it would, but then again, we're at that performance mode. Rocket League 1080p high settings, we averaged 87 FPS. So when it comes to GTA 5 on the mobile Intel XE graphics, I never got really great performance, but with this one here, 1080p normal settings, we got an average of 86 FPS. You could bump some of this stuff up to high, and it really comes down to that CPU just putting out a lot more power than a mobile chip does. I also wanted to test Cyberpunk 2077, 720p, low, 80% resolution scale. We only averaged 29 FPS, and this is just one of those hard games to run, but I've been able to get better performance out of AMD APUs and the mobile variants of the Iris XE graphics. And the final one I tested was Red Dead 2, 900p, low settings, this is just a benchmark. Unfortunately, I couldn't get this to go full screen, it's due to driver issues with this new Intel Iris GPU. And in the benchmark, we only averaged 38 FPS. So in the end, I'm disappointed with this GPU, I was really hoping to see some better performance, at least better performance over, let's say, the 5700G with those built-in Radeon 8 graphics, but recently I did a little small form factor water cool build on that, and with the Night Raid benchmarks, we actually came ahead with that 5700G by a bit, and it really comes down to that 5700G just being a better CPU. But if we take a look at the graphics score, that DG1 did beat out the Radeon 8 by just a bit, about 200 points. But when it comes down to it, that Radeon 8 is built into the CPU, so we still have room and a free PCIe slot to add a dedicated GPU down the road. So as it sits right now, personally, I would kind of skip this. I would wait for the DG2 or the DG3, whatever they're coming up with next. This is Intel's entry-level dedicated GPU, and we'll see better ones down the road. But with this here, I really do wish they would have went with GDDR5 or just DDR5 in general over that LP DDR4X. So yeah, this is one to skip. Uh, they do sell a version with the RX 560. They also have a version that's a bit more expensive with the 1650, and I would definitely go with that over this Intel DG1. But I'm still glad I had a chance to get my hands on this GPU, because like I mentioned, I've actually been wanting to test it for a long time. Intel announced that they'd be releasing dedicated GPUs a while ago, and this is one that I really wanted to test out, but this is definitely not the one to buy. Maybe the DG2 or the DG3. I got a feeling that Intel will get it together with these dedicated GPUs and we'll see some awesome performance in the next iterations. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. If you have any questions or you want to see anything else running on this, just let me know in the comments below. If you're interested in learning more about this CyberPower PC, I will leave a few links in the description. I'm also going to leave some links for alternate pre-builds that will perform better. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.